During the mid-1960s, the civil rights movement was going strong with Martin Luther King Jr. Free at last! Thank God Almighty! We are free at last! But in Texas, basketball coach Don Haskins was breaking down the color barrier in his own way. Thesis. Don Haskins took a stand by being the first coach to ever start five African Americans in a college basketball game, and by being the first coach in the southern United States to offer many scholarships to African Americans. By doing this, he opened doors for more African Americans to start coming to schools of higher education and also started the process of desegregating colleges in the United States. Don Haskins was born in Enid, Oklahoma in 1930. His dream was to play college basketball for Henry Ibat at Oklahoma A&M, which is now Oklahoma State University. Don grew up during the Depression and Dust Bowl era, which he said made him a tougher man when he became an adult. As a young kid, he noticed how African Americans were treated differently because of the color of their skin. In fact, his best friend was an African American named Herman Carr, who also played basketball at the black school in their town. In Oklahoma, uh, he was raised, well, well, you know, it was segregated during that time, but uh, he lived, we both lived in Enid, Oklahoma. And uh, after school, uh, we would meet on the school, well, we used to just go up to the uh, school ground and, and, and play basketball, you know. Mm -hmm. And that and he was up there one day and I met him that way. And we started just playing basketball, you know. One-on-one, yeah. -on -one. usually every day, we just him and I'd be up there most of the time just playing basketball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's how we met. And, and it grew from there, you know, of course, uh, Don graduated two years before I did, and uh, he went to college, and I went in the military. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's how I met him, you know, on the school ground. <laughs> Don remembered playing one-on-one -on -one basketball with Herman and almost always losing to him. Once Don started to become famous in Oklahoma for being one of the best high school players, newspapers all around were saying that he was the best player in the state. But in his heart, he knew that he wasn't, and that Herman Carr was the best, and that just nobody wanted to recruit him because of the color of his skin. Due to racial segregation, Herman Carr was prevented from pursuing his dream of playing college basketball. Instead, he joined the Army after he got out of high school. Don Haskins got an offer to play for Henry Ibat at Oklahoma A&M under scholarship, and he took it. He said that those were some of the most important years of his life because he learned how hard you had to work to become good at anything you do. He said that on some days he remembered going to practice up to three times a day because Henry Iba said that they needed to become better. Don said, Those years with Coach Iba made me the man I am today. In fact, till the day Henry Iba died, the two were both still good friends. Don Haskins played a little bit of AAU basketball right after college, but after a couple of months doing that, his wife Mary told him to get a coaching job so he could make more money. Don started off coaching at Benjamin High School in a small town with a population of about 230 people. He coached both the girls and boys basketball team and led them both to the state tournament. Just like he didn't like to discriminate against people because of their race, he also didn't discriminate against the girls. He treated them the same as the boys and made them work just as hard during practices. Back then, girls basketball wasn't taken seriously and it was coached with the intensity as if they were in gym class. Don said that he viewed everyone as players and didn't care about their race, religion, sex, or nationality. A good quote from Don that represents this is, Players are players. Doesn't matter if it's a girl or a boy. A great player thrives on being pushed hard. After that, he coached at a number of other high schools until Texas Western hired him as their head coach. Don Haskins' first year at Texas Western was 1961. He started the season three months early because he was so excited about coaching college basketball for the first time. Immediately, he started to recruit players. It didn't matter if they were black, white, or yellow. If they were good players, then Haskins was going to recruit them. As Haskins said, To me, they were just kids in white and orange uniforms. Not white guys, not black guys, just minors. In later years, I coached Hispanics, Native Americans, and foreign players. To me, they were all the same. They were my players. A good example of how Don never looked at race when recruiting was when he signed a convict in one of his first years at Texas Western. The kid's name was Bobby Joe Hill, and he was black. Haskins heard that he was a good basketball player, but he wanted to see if he committed a serious crime. Haskins called up the sheriff of Hill's town and asked what Hill had done. The sheriff said that Hill and two other men had stolen $3.75 from a laundromat and that they got locked up only for that. Haskins then asked the sheriff if a white person would have been arrested for the crime. The sheriff responded with this, I'm going to tell you the truth, if them boys weren't colored, they wouldn't have been arrested. This was another instance that showed Don how bad African Americans were treated back then and encouraged him to give black athletes opportunities and scholarships. 
Don said that one of the main reasons that he was open to giving African American scholarships was because of how he grew up with Herman Carr. Herman was a great basketball player that had to join the army instead of going to college because no coach would give him a scholarship to college because he was black. As we grew up together, you know, we got along real good. We did everything together, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, he told me that it had some <laughs> it had some uh, influence on him because of the way we grew up, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what, when he started coaching basketball, I guess it that probably run across his mind, you know, something like that. But um, I never gave it a thought, you know, for my friendship and his friendship was, you know. During Don Haskins' 1966 season at Texas Western, he had seven African Americans on his team. They were Bobby Joe Hill, David Latin, Orson Artis, Willie Worsley, Willie Cager, Neville Shedd, and Harry Flournoy. The team received death threats, opposition from the media, and a general disgust from all the Southern coaches in Division I basketball. Steve Haskins, who is Don Haskins' son, remembers his dad getting about 50,000 racist hate letters in his first couple of years at Texas Western. These letters came from many people in the South, but some of them came from highly educated college professors. One from a professor from the University of Alabama letterhead, and it was the same thing as, as one of the guys from the, you know, that you would expect, you know, from the sticks to, to, to write, and that shocked him that, 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 you know, somebody that was an educated uh, person would still have the same viewpoint as someone that, that, that wasn't as educated. Texas Western kept fighting through the season as major underdogs. They only lost once in the entire regular season and came into the NCAA tournament being nationally ranked. In the final game, Don decided to only play the African Americans to prove that they were equal to everyone else and that they belonged in college sports. Texas Western went on to stun the all-white Kentucky team in the final, 72-65. Trailing 72-65 and the ball game is over. As Kentucky has lost the championship game for the first time in their history. Texas Western winning the national championship had many positive impacts on our country. More African Americans started to go to college and more African Americans played in college sports. Additionally, racial barriers were broken down in the South and racial stereotypes about black people were disproven. In 1965, African American students only made up 4.6% of the collegiate student body. In 2012, that number was 12.6%. That is a massive growth of about 174%. Some people might say that 12.6% doesn't seem like a large number, but if you factor in that African Americans only make up about 12.9% of the U.S. population, then 12.6% is an impressive statistic. Also back in the 1966 season, the Atlantic Coast Conference, Southeastern Conference, and the Southwest Conference were all white. In 1967, which was the year after Texas Western won the national championship, the SEC signed its first African American player. His name was Perry Wallace. In the 1969 season, two African Americans were playing in the SEC. By 1975, African Americans made up 45% of SEC players, and the conference was considered to have achieved racial equality. Currently, African American men make up in total 61% of men's basketball players. Another way that the championship game impacted the United States was in the manner in which sports writers and ordinary people talked about African Americans. Racist stereotypes were used back then such as, the only thing the Texas Western team couldn't do with the basketball was sign their name on it. This game put to rest a lot of those racist stereotypes. I bought into a lot of those same stereotypes that, that everyone else did. Certainly the, the notion that you needed a white point guard to sort of control things and settle things down, you know, the way you needed a white shortstop or a white catcher in baseball, you needed a white quarterback. Uh, I, you know, I, I bought into those things without even thinking about them. I just grew up thinking that that was the way of the world and that that's the way things were. And this game certainly opened my eyes, uh, as I suspect it did with a lot of people. Don Haskins winning the national championship had a major impact on the number of African Americans playing in college basketball. This was a time in which the ACC, SEC, and Southwestern Conference wouldn't give scholarships to African Americans. But after Texas Western's championship game, African Americans were enrolling at a faster rate into schools of higher education in the South. <laughs>